Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Hannah, also known as Tropical Plant Addict. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone that wished me a happy birthday last week. I posted a couple of videos um, because I went on a special day out for my birthday and thank you very much for all your kind messages and I hope you enjoyed the videos. If you haven't seen them, I'll link them below for you. Today I wanted to talk to you about thrips because I'm unfortunately having to deal with them on my plants at the moment. So I just wanted to share with you how I'm treating my plants to get rid of them basically. They are really tiny insects, very hard to see on your plants, especially if your eyes aren't the best. They're generally less than one millimetre in size and usually like a, a pale orange colour. Thrips basically feed on your plants by sucking, puncturing and sucking the nutrients out of the leaves and this can cause yellowing on the leaves and brown patches. So unfortunately I realised that my beautiful Orbifolia had thrips because I noticed some yellowing on the edges of the leaves and as you well know my Orbifolia doesn't generally have any yellow or crispy bits on the leaves so I knew something was wrong. So if you notice any yellowing on the leaves of your plants have a little look on the underside of the leaf because that's generally where the insects will be. So just turn the leaf up, have a little look, see if you can see anything. The thing is, they're so hard to see, but if your plant's generally in good health and you just notice some random patches on it of yellow or brown, then it generally is something to do with insects. I mean, yes, you can get yellow leaves from overwatering and Sometimes the old leaves will turn yellow and then drop off, but it's a bit different. Um, from thrips, it's normally patches of yellow on the leaves rather than the whole leaf kind of yellowing. And also if you turn the leaf and have a look underneath, you will often see brown on the underside of the leaves from thrips. I'll zoom in here and I'll show you exactly what I mean with the yellowing and the brown patches and hopefully you won't get to see any thrips on my Orbifolia because I've treated her and I really hope there's none on here. Last year unfortunately I lost about three plants to thrips. I lost a quite a well medium-sized Monstera and a couple of um, Marantas. I did treat them all with my neem oil mix, which I'll link below for you. Um, that's also in my fungus snap video if you haven't seen that one already. But after multiple treatments, the thrips kept coming back, it didn't seem to work, and at the time I didn't really know of any other products that you could use to kind of get rid of them. Luckily I did manage to save one lonesome leaf off my Monstera, which I've been rooting in water for quite a few months. It's been really slow rooting because it was rooting over winter, but now it's actually got a new leaf, so I might um, pot it up soon. You can also find thrips in the soil and they will lay eggs on the leaves of your plants, but the eggs are so tiny you won't be able to see them. And I think thrips only live for about 45 days. So before you treat your plants with anything, I recommend to change the first um, two to three inches of the soil to make sure that you've got rid of any insects that are in the soil. I also recommend um, checking your plants for bugs every week or so. Just have a look on the underside of the leaves just to make sure there's no bugs because once they're on your plant it doesn't take long for them to suck the life out of it. I mean look how big my Orbifolia is and already there's quite a few um, yellow leaves. I'm really quite gutted about it because this is one of my favourite plants and I really hope that the treatment is working and that I can save the plant. It's also quite beneficial to wipe down the leaves of your plants with a neem oil mix. This um, acts as a little bit of a barrier on the leaves um, which kind of deters pests and also it gives the leaves a bit of a shine and I was going to be doing this with all my plants over the next few weeks um, but obviously it's a bit too late so I have been going around my other plants checking them and giving them a bit of a, a neem oil wipe 
So after doing some research online and having a look on Amazon at the reviews of different products and also getting some advice from the Ginger Jungle, which is a plant shop that I get most of my rare tropical plants from, the treatment that was recommended to me was predatory mites. And this is the product here. It comes in like a big shaker tub. I got this off Amazon and I'll link it below for you. So this tub contains 50,000 mites, tiny little mites, you can barely see them. And there's also something else in there to kind of, for the mites to like grab onto. So you have to give it a good shake and then basically sprinkle it onto the leaves of your plants and Sorry, Marvin's um, tickling my feet. What are you doing? Completely forgotten what I was saying now. Um, yes, sprinkle the powder onto all the leaves of your plants. It does look a bit unsightly. Looks like they've got like crumbs and dust all over them, but if it works, that is the main thing. And also on the base of the soil, um, you can create little mounds of the powder and I've been placing it like mounds of the powder at the base of the stems so hopefully the mites will crawl all over the soil and up the stems of the plants. These predatory mites are completely harmless to people, pets and wildlife which is really good so I don't have to worry about my birds or anything like that. These are also best applied at 14 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. If it's too cold, um, maybe they die or something, I don't know. Um, but it, I think it said above 14 and below 30. What are you doing to my feet? So I'm just gonna show you how I apply this to my plants. Also, unfortunately, my huge Monstera up in my office has also been battling thrips as well. Right, so let me show you how I apply this. So just give it a good shake. And then there's either a pour function or a sprinkle. I'm gonna try the sprinkle. So. Basically you're just pouring it on all the leaves like that. As I said, it does look a bit unsightly, but as long as it works, that's the main thing. As for how long I'm going to be keeping the treatment on the plant, I think I'm gonna keep it on for around 45 days just because that's the life of a thrip. So hopefully after that time they'll all be gone. And then I'll get in close to show you how I have applied it to the soil, just in clumps. So I guess I'll keep you guys updated as to how my Orbifolia is doing, if the treatment has worked. I mean, at the moment, whenever I've been checking under the leaves, I haven't seen any of the insects, but I'll, I'll just keep checking it and making sure that they've gone. Fingers crossed because I love this plant so much and I'll be so upset if I lose it. If you've got any questions about the treatment or about thrips, let me know in the comments below. Also, um, someone on my Instagram, because I posted a photo of my Orbifolia telling everyone about the thrips and that I was treating her, and someone commented this morning saying that you can treat your plants with beneficial nematodes, which is another predatory um, treatment. I'm actually treating my garden with that at the moment for slugs, but I didn't realize that you could use it for thrips as well, so I'm gonna be looking into that, but that's a soil treatment, not a treatment for the leaves. I might do a separate video on that treatment if anyone's interested. Thanks so much for watching, and big thanks to all my new subscribers and all my existing subscribers. Thanks so much for the support and all the lovely comments you've been sending me and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Take care everybody, bye.